Hello guys, today I went out and bought some extra lights to test H3 bulbs in. And they costed around $20 for a pair. The whole uh, construction here is in uh, plastic. It's not reinforced with uh, glass fiber or anything. And the technology used here with uh, this uh, lens here on the front is also old but it still works. And you can also find these kinds of lights on eBay. I checked before this video. A similar, similar light to this would cost around $5 or so for one piece. And I did a cool thing to the other light. In here you actually got a 75 watt uh, xenon bulb. So 75 watt compared to a 55 watt halogen. The bulb life on the 55 watt halogen I would expect to be around 100 to 400 hours if you're lucky and they perform maybe 1500, 1500 lumens when they are brand new and that will of course increase with age as the tungsten and the coil in there burns off. And then we have the xenon one. Maybe five, six thousand lumens in this one, so almost four times as much light. And as you can see, the beam pattern here is fairly tight, and that is what I mean. It's uh, extra light and not like a work light. So I have actually tested or measured this with a lux meter, and it will throw the light 180 meters with one lux which means 360 meters with 0.25 lux. And 0.25 lux is like the same kind of light that you get from your full moon. So I will, so I will turn on the power supply now. And as you can see, it will take a little bit longer for the Xenon version to power up. But I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. The beam pattern isn't as uh, as tight anymore. It's because you get a lot more light scatter uh, than with the halogen bulb, and that is why you won't really want to put a 75 watt bulb like in a low beam reflector. But I also tested this with the lux meter, and I would get around 100 meters more of beam distance. So here you can see the difference between the xenon and the halogen. Now you can really see that the xenon is of course much brighter and the halogen is now nowhere to be found. And that is because it's more intense and therefore you will have a longer throwing distance. And I will show you outside later today. So here you can see the HID version. Of course you have this big ballast here because it's a 75 watt one but I can say that uh, it's pretty simple to hide this in the grill of your car or something like that but in general 50, I mean 75 watt ballast or like the 100 watt ones uh, you have to have those sitting somewhere outside the light but if you have a little bit bigger lights with a little bit more of a room behind the reflectors you often can put a 55 watt ballast back there which uh, makes it a lot easier to mount it and stuff like that. But I wanted to show you how I converted this one to a xenon one. So if you are not familiar with converting halogens to xenon this is just going to be a really basic video. It's actually a really simple process, but uh, if you have done it sometimes, but I would advise you not to try to see and convert these smaller lights because is you get into a lot more problems. Not problems, but some more obstacles. So first, of course, I have to take out the reflector and lens, so I have to remove these two screws. So this one here is really cheaply made, so the lens and the reflector are two separate pieces, 
but it's not a problem. Then we just have to loosen up the wires, take them off so we can put in the xenon bulb. And in these kinds of small light you often find H3 bulbs. So the only thing with, especially with H3 bulbs is that they are often fastened with a screw here because the grounding point is this kind of base itself. So it gets uh, its ground and mounting with this screw here. And then we just take out the plus side and unscrew the negative or ground. Like this, and then we can remove the bulb, like this. Then of course you need a xenon bulb, this is a 75 watt Arsenar xenon bulb. H3 of course, you need the right socle, or the right base. And 75 watt bulbs are much bigger. The tube is much bigger if you compare them to like a 35 or or 55 watt bulb. But as you can see, the electrode that is running back, it's actually angled at an angle, so it actually just fits in here. And you will line up the xenon bulb as you would with a standard halogen bulb. And then when it's lined up, we just need to insert a screw on the top there so it won't be grounding or have the negative connection now we have that separate in these wires which we will run to the ballast so we just take the screw from the old wires and run it in here so when you have fastened the bulb then you want to run the wires somewhere. In this light here I even had to like cut off from the back side here because you can see that the back side of this HID bulb here is uh, coming further out so there wasn't actually more enough room in the back side here therefore uh, I was advising you to maybe get a bit bigger uh, bigger lamp itself. So. Uh, this was like the light I showed you before, but I just took some electrical tape to seal up that hole. And you can just use some hot glue or anything, just as long as it covers it up and it won't get all of the debris in here. Then you just need to line up the reflectors, insert the lens. So now the light itself is finished, this tape job here do a better job than what I did here. I'm just going to use this for this test here. Uh, then you have these two wires coming out here, you have to take this one out there, out of the way. Then you have these two uh, coming out of the ballast, you just connect them. like this and then you have the rest here plus and minus if you're gonna run this from your stock wires I would advise you not to because this will probably use more than double the amount of electricity when it starts and uh, that will either damage your cables or the ballast will have be having a problem starting or getting the bulb to fire so now I will be testing the $5 light and this is the halogen version So as you can see it helps a little bit but it isn't, uh, you can't really 
shiny too lo long down the road that, or it will be just end up in darkness. And now we will test with my scene and low beam and see if it helps anything. You would like to use these kinds of lights as your high beam. And now you can see my low beam is on. And then I will shine it as if this was my high beam. So there isn't a lot of light that I would uh, uh, get from using the, uh, this light, as you can see. And here is uh, the same light with the 75 watt. As you can see now I'm able to see further down the road and it was as I mes measured this will have uh, 100 meters more with one lux and also as I said the main hot spot will be bigger so you can see uh, it's uh, shining up a bigger place and uh, also the hot spot isn't as tight and it's more of a gradual And it's more of a gradual from uh, bright to dark. And then I will test it here with my low beam again. And we are going to see if this will help uh, me with my high beam. So as you can see I will have more control down the road. If I were to have mounted one of these. As you can see it gives me a f little bit of increased, uh, increased ranged, range I mean. But now I will be showing you my actual high beams and we will see the difference. So it, it's not like it will help so much on my car with the 75 watt Xenon which is actually really bright. But uh, this would maybe be a little bit better if you have some halogen uh, lights or something like that. Or if you are driving a lava or something. But it's a little bit too low performance and quality for me, but it was really nice and cool testing and uh, I hope, hope you guys also found it interesting.